Hey, this is TWD coming at you with another JC. No, oh, that's not, was that too much? It's too much. Right, I'm checking. Um, hey, welcome to Talking with Docs. We're the docs that talk. No, that's, okay, one more. Hey, welcome to Talking with Docs. You know who we are. No, yeah, people. Half the people at this hospital don't know who we are, and we have a show. <laughs> welcome. Okay. To another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. I am not sure who's beside me. This I'm time. Dr. Paul Zalzal. And today, you must have drank coffee, which is apropos, because that's what the article's about, because normally you don't drink coffee and you're acting a little wacky today. I didn't drink coffee. Okay. We so. are doing our show, Talking with Docs, on Journal Club, another journal club. Okay. This is a journal club where we are going to look at an article about coffee and the health benefits of coffee. Okay. And there's lots of purported health benefits, uh, balancing your sugars, helping your liver, helping your brain, helping your mental and exercise performance. We'll talk about that in another video, but today it's just about a specific article that is measuring what? Yeah. Well, that's what they say coffee does. We're not saying that. We're saying no. that's purported. 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 That's what I said, purported. Did you say purported? Purported. Did you say purported or I reported? Purported. Purported. Yeah, it's like proposed. I know. Propose. I never, I don't know. I never use that word. Okay, so in the... European Journal of Preventative Cardiology okay. this year, 2022. All right. The journal article is entitled, The Impact of Coffee Subtypes on Incident Cardiovascular Disease, so heart disease, stroke, arrhythmias, irregular heart rate, and mortality, death. Okay. Long-term outcomes from the UK Biobank. Biobank, go down and make a deposit or withdrawal from the old Biobank. So we thought this article was worth reading and okay. critiquing yep. because decent study yeah we like decent studies that are good number of participants over like 500, half a million uh, 500,000 good follow-up 10 12 year follow-up for this um, specific measured outcomes yes they had some good outcomes cardiovascular disease arrhythmia mortality and so that's that's like the pros those are the and then, pros and so well what did they show what did it show okay so they looked at uh, drip Instant decaffeinated coffee. Right, and they found, well, yeah. There That's looks like there's a statistically significant reduction in cardiovascular disease, arrhythmia, and mortality right. in the coffee drinkers. So I like to put a little asterisk there mm -hmm. because statistically significant means that when you apply statistical tools for it, it says the two groups are different. It's a very recognized, well-accepted, not negotiable amount of difference. Right. However, whether that difference translates to mean anything in real life is what's called clinically significant, and that's more of what we care about. So mm -hmm. if I can reduce my risk of having a heart attack by uh, running up and down the stairs 12 times, but it only reduces my risk by one in 300,000, you have to decide, is that gonna be worth it? It could be statistically significant right. risk reduction, but is it clinically significant? But if someone said, if you eat one clove of garlic a day and that's gonna reduce my risk, my personal risk by 50%, that's something that is much more clinically that's significant. That's both statistically significant and clinically significant. Right. So were the reductions in risk clinically significant in your opinion? In my opinion, the answer would be no. No, they presented the results in hazard ratio. A hazard ratio is very similar to a relative risk reduction, which we've talked about in another video. Mm -hmm. The only difference is hazard ratio looks at endpoints over time, right. whereas relative risk reduction just looks at the endpoints at the end of the study. Minor difference, but uh, it is a measure of relative risk reduction if you look at the hazard ratio. I think the hazard there is that you could overestimate yes. your difference. Yes, the hazards of looking at just the hazard ratio. And the hazard ratios they presented were, were small, like on the order of 0.8, 0.88 yeah so like com when you compared the two risks it's like 0.8 percent less okay however the absolute risks were not really well presented in this paper like reported you mean? Yeah, yeah reported all and they did say at the end if you want the data you can contact the corresponding author nobody's going to do that just give me the data so they didn't so from from what i could glean the absolute risk reduction is very 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 small okay so so to summarize, what did they specifically find or what do they specifically claim? So they said that coffee reduces the risk of arrhythmia and ironically, decaffeinated coffee had a lower 
yeah. or a higher reduction in risk for arrhythmia. And which you does, think weird. That doesn't make sense, right? Wow. Because caffeine, caffeine is going to, uh, when you have an arrhythmia, often you're told to stop, take, stop your caffeine because right. it can lead to an arrhythmia. Right. So that's kind of weird. And then all types of coffee reduce your risk of mortality as well as cardiovascular events. And it seemed that the sweet spot was two to three cups per day. Yeah. Yes. That's what, that's what they suggested from the start. So at the end of the day, I don't drink coffee, never drank a cup of coffee in my life. You drink? One a day. One a day. Did this article convince you to drink more coffee or me to start drinking coffee? What's your answer? No. No, me either. Nay, Bob. No. That's, no is that a plant? No. Is that a, it's cor- a, is that a corporate plant? No. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. It's like conflict, subliminal. Conflict of interest. Nay, Bob. This was not sponsored by any cop, Maxwell House, Starbucks, any coffee place. Uh, Nescafe. Nescafe. Nothing. <laughs> nobody, nobody sponsored this study. It was... It was um, sort of no funding was used for this study. Right, so no so, conflicts of interest, which you no talked conflict, about before. Yeah, unless the authors are heavy duty coffee drinkers and trying to justify it, I don't yeah. know. So for me, for the following three reasons, I am not gonna change my not coffee drinking habits. Okay. Number one, they gave me the data in hazard ratios. Yeah. That's not as useful to me as it could be. Right. B, I'm more interested in the all cause mortality and there wasn't a big difference in all-cause mortality. And again, they didn't give me the proper data. Okay. And number four, it doesn't really make sense. Some of the outcomes don't make sense. Uh, and I don't like the taste of coffee. Do you realize you went my top three reasons and you went one, B, and four? I should add a coffee. <laughs> should add a coffee. So if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Share it with someone that likes coffee or doesn't like coffee. Yeah. Anyway. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. See you next time.